Hey guys, uh, this is a tutorial on how to create a guestbook with Redis and PHP. You can find this tutorial on Google's website and you can also find uh, the link to the GitHub if you scroll down a little bit. Uh, you can find the GitHub link right here and uh, the GitHub files, uh, all the source files you can find uh, by going one step above. Uh, you can find the files for the PHP file. Uh, the configuration files, the deployment files, the service YAML files, all the files are found in this uh, GitHub link as well. Okay, so let's start. Uh, okay, so this is the link for the tutorial. Uh, and like I mentioned uh, before, uh, you can find this tutorial on Google's website. Uh, so what does this uh, tutorial do? Uh, this tutorial, we build a simple multi-tire web application using the Google Kubernetes engine. Uh, so uh, so you have the guestbook front end, uh, which is uh, written in PHP, uh, probably runs on an Apache server. And um, you have, uh, and this uh, front end is exposed uh, as an external IP address with a load balancer. And uh, it, the back end is a Redis cluster uh, with a single master and multiple slave workers. Uh, so this uh, example, this tutorial highlights uh, a number of uh, Kubernetes engine concepts. Um, now, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, the back end is a Redis cluster. Uh, so the front end, when it writes to the back end, uh, it writes to the Redis master. Uh, so we have a single Redis master and the write happens in the Redis master. And whenever we read data, uh, we read from are the Redis slaves. Uh, so there are multiple Redis slaves. Uh, I believe there are two replicas of it. Uh, so when we do a read, uh, we read from the Redis slave. Um, so there is code uh, in the PHP to do that as well. Uh, so we'll have a look at that as well. And obviously the Redis slaves, uh, they need to synchronize data from the Redis master because that's where we write all the data. Okay, so the things to do. Uh, so first thing is uh, we need to set up the Redis master. Uh, so we set up the Redis master. The image is already, the Docker image is already in, uh, in the Google registry. Uh, so we pull that image uh, and we create this Redis master. And then we set up the Redis uh, workers. Uh, so we have uh, two Redis workers that we set up. And uh, obviously, we have to make sure that the Redis slave uh, knows where the master is. Uh, and you can find all this, uh, all this information in the, uh, in, the, in the deployment file and also in the bash file as well. Uh, I'll, I'll show you how it is set up as well. And then we need to set up the guestbook web front end. Uh, we're going to set up uh, three replicas of that, uh, the front end one, two, and three. And uh, this needs to um, this needs to talk to the Redis master. Uh, so the way the service is set up is uh, as a cluster IP, so that it can either talk to the Redis master and also to the Redis slave, uh, which is not uh, shown here. But any write happens to the Redis master. And then we want to be able to visit the guestbook website uh, from an external IP address. Uh, so for that, we create a service uh, YAML file uh, with the type load balancer so that um, uh, from an external IP address, uh, we are able to hit the front end. Uh, so there is the load balancer, and then we are able to either hit uh, the front end three, two, or one. Uh, and then we are also able to scale up this uh, guestbook web front end. So instead of three replicas, so we can run maybe five as well. Uh, so those are the things we want to accomplish in this, uh, in this exercise. And let's uh, go through on how we do that. Uh, so first off, uh, we want to deploy the Redis master. Uh, so the deployment YAML file is already found in the tutorial from the uh, GitHub. Uh, you can get the deployment uh, file and you can deploy the Redis master. Um, but prior to deploying the Redis master, uh, we need to set up the Kubernetes cluster. And this cluster, the way we have set it up is we have set it up with three nodes. 
and by deploying this uh, redis master config deployment yaml file uh, the kubernetes controller um, creates a pod and it puts this redis master container with uh, an ip address uh, say let's say node one uh, now this is up to the kubernetes controller to decide which node to use. It can either use node 1, node 2, or node 3. So it can also put this Redis master container in, in node 2. Uh, now the other thing to notice is um, the IP address. Uh, you can't, you cannot rely on the IP address on, on this container. Uh, the reason is twofold. One is the Kubernetes controller can deploy this uh, Redis master container in any of the nodes, and the IP address therefore would change um, based on which node it, uh, it deploys it to. And the other thing too is uh, if this pod ever goes down, then along with it, the IP address goes down, and then the Redis, uh, the Kubernetes controller can again uh, deploy this uh, pod in any of the nodes, and therefore the IP address can change. So the front end needs to talk to this Redis master container uh, in order to uh, write uh, data and so on, uh, but it cannot rely on the IP address of this master container. Uh, in order to in order to co come up with a reliable way of uh, of uh, addressing this pod, uh, that's why we have uh, this concept called a service. Now, this service is going to have a fixed IP address, um, and this uh, service is also going to proxy the request to any of the to this pod. So it doesn't matter where the Redis master container resides, whether it's in node one, node two, or node three. As long as the front-end service talks to this Redis master service, uh, this will proxy the request to the proper node. Um, and uh, one thing to note is um, the service, uh, if you look at the service configuration file, um, the type is not specified, which means the default type of cluster IP is used, um, which means that this IP address is not externally available, but is only internally available within the cluster uh, which is fine because we don't want this Redis master to be to be accessed uh, directly from the outside. Uh, so yeah, again, um, so it doesn't matter where the pod resides as long as the front end is talking to this Redis master service, uh, the uh, request is proxied uh, to the proper uh, Redis master. Now, how does this all? come into play. Uh, so if you look at the master deployment file, that YAML file, uh, you will have, you'll see that there are some labels. Uh, so this uniquely identifies the uh, the master container. Um, now if you look in your service YAML file, uh, you will have, uh, you'll have exactly the same labels in the selector, uh, uh, in the selector element. Um, so as long as these two matches, um, the service knows where to direct the request to. And um, the other thing that we need to also make sure is the container port should match the target port. Uh, so as long as the request comes on port 6379, um, so the request is uh, redirected to the target port, which is 6379, uh, which is the same as the container port. So in a similar fashion, uh, we can do the Redis workers as well. Uh, the deployment.yaml file is uh, provided in the tutorial, uh, and we are creating two, two slaves, uh, two replicas of the slave uh, in this instance. Again, it's up to the Kubernetes uh, controller to decide where to deploy these pods. Uh, it can deploy it in node one or combination of node one and node uh, three, like in this case, um, as long as uh, the number of replic number of pods is two, uh, the controller is happy. So it's up to the it's up to the Kubernetes controller to decide how it uh, deploys these pods. Uh, again, uh, since uh, we can't uh, reliably find the we can't reliably use the IP address of the pod. Uh, we have to go with the Redis service. Um, so the service YAML file is also provided in the tutorial. 
and um, the Redis slave service is created. Uh, it has an IP address, a unique IP address, and uh, as long as you talk to this Redis slave service, uh, it will proxy this uh, request to either of these plots. Now, this uh, Redis worker, um, it needs to know where the Redis master is. Uh, so, how does this all happen? Uh, we can figure out how this all happens uh, by looking at the source code. Um, and you will see that uh, when the Redis uh, servers are started up, uh, there is a batch bash script that gets um, executed. And it figures out that the Redis uh, server is the Redis master. So, so the, um, and uh, as long as, and then you can also see in the deployment file, uh, there is uh, this envira, envira, environment variable called get host from, and this is accessed, this value is accessed, and as long as uh, the value is not env, uh, the Redis server is, um, is determined to be the Redis master. Okay, so step three, uh, now we need to set up the guestbook web frontend. Uh, the deployment file is provided in the tutorial. And um, in this case, we are doing three replicas of the web frontend. And in this case, um, just like in the previous case, um, we need to create a frontend service so that we can reliably hit that IP address. Um, but in addition to all the values provided, we also have a type which says load balancer. And this allows us to, to expose uh, this IP address uh, externally. Uh, so what you can do is now you can have uh, a, um, a browser uh, hitting this IP address from the previous slide, the IP address X. Um, so now this IP address is... Uh, is exposed externally. Uh, so now with, uh, with this browser, you can hit this load balancer, and this load balancer then uh, uh, sends the request to any of the pods to fulfill your request. Now, we also have this requirement that any write should happen to the, uh, to the Redis master, and all the reads should happen on the Redis slave. And if you look at the PHP file, again, uh, once you go into the, uh, uh, once you go into the source code in the GitHub, uh, you will see that if there is a set, uh, so set meaning if there is a write, then the host that it wants to use is Redis-master. And if it is um, not a set, uh, in which case, uh, if it is uh, a read, uh, then we want to use the host, which is the Redis slave. And this is the service that points to the Redis workers. And this is the service that points to the Redis master. And the last step, uh, the last step is, uh, to, um, is to scale up the front end. And to scale up the web front end is uh, just a matter of uh, like uh, setting up the um, rep number of replicas set to be five, uh, so you can you can run the kubectl scale deployment command uh, with the replicas equals five, and that will um, it will scale up the number of parts to five, and the load balancer behaves um, uh, in a behaves uh, uh, just includes the new newly created parts as well. Um, so that is it for the theory part of uh, the tutorial, um, and I'll create another another uh, video uh, going through the demo of this exercise. Thanks, guys.